everybody and anybody who wants to get to the screen and you can be We're going to now get in the simulation. We're going to have, this is going to be a little tight, but we're going to have all of you come in and do the situation. Walk around. Yep. Okay, what's I need going on? one of you to be a lead. I prefer not Jackson because he knows too much. Okay, is that it? Yeah, sure. How much in depth is your first time? Right now. I think it okay. fell down. Right. Right. Well, all right. So you walk into this situation. What do you see? Talk to me as we walk in. The man laying on the floor. It's great for the rest of the group because you have to really be a body here. <laughs> a body. Yeah. So that went down. Okay. What's that really? Well, that's Here's me bleeding. Put away. <laughs> what else do you see? Okay, you're going to have to speak up so everybody can hear. I see a camera. All you guys. There are several tools on the ground. Just come in the door, get over here. Keep moving. It appears that a bit of tools has been spread out across the table and floor. Alright. So, how so we tripped. He tripped on the extension cord and he knocked his head. Okay. So what do you see here that's not safe? An extension cord that's just laying on the floor. Okay. It's what? Hazard. Why? It's a tripping hazard. Okay. Anything else? What if it's alive? It could shock you. If I came across somebody who's actually sitting on electricity and I come down and say, hey, what's up? There could be two problems. I just got shocked. Now I'm the second patient. So it's a good eye. What do you do? Get it out of there. Right? Okay, this guy doesn't seem very responsive, right? He had tools on the table. What happened? Did he go to get one? What do you think? Are you at risk? If you go down on hit, go down to help him, is something else that might fall on you? Yes. Come on, you guys. Can't be back there. Get up here. You got to see this. This is a part of the experience. All right. So now we've moved the tools back, right? So what do you want to do? Go. Then you want to go see if he's responsive. So. How? Pinch his skin. Any moans? Oh, no. <laughs> so he's so he's slightly responsive. Yep. yep. I'm going to take you a little deeper into training. There's go ahead, stay there. Just, we'll keep rolling. There's things what we call when you walk on the scene. Is the scene safe? We did that. BSI. We didn't do that. No. Right. We talked about body substance isolation. The next thing is ABC. And you can throw a D and E if you really want to get sophisticated. But what's ABC stand for? Airway breathing circulation. Thank you. Man. He just talked to you. Is yep. he breathing? He's breathing. Does he have circulation? He's not going to talk without circulation. We got our airway open, our breathing going on, our circulation happening. Bam. That's yep. good. Good. Yep. All good stuff. So now, what do we do with him now? What would you do? I'd call 911. Hey, exactly. man. <laughs> Boy, did I pick the right guy for this yes. time. Check That's exactly care. what I wanted to have because just like they talked about in the AED movie, you want to get a higher level of help. Now, at the competitions, we're lucky. You've got either EMT, paramedic, gurney, I, you see the crash pack, well, we call it a crash pack, full of all the stuff that they would need if this guy goes into arrest or has a head injury or has a back problem, okay? So what can you do now? Um, I try and stop the bleeding. I try and um, obviously get a first aid kit, get people okay. to obviously call 911. Mm -hmm. So that's what mm -hmm. I start with. Good. There isn't, at this point, putting, so where did our kit go? Where's my quality control man? How are we doing so far, Jackson? Good. <laughs> I got, I got drugs. Yeah. So what would you do? You've got something here. We've got five minutes till we get help. You can either put a bandage on it or what? Yeah, I would uh, try to stop the bleeding, like Connor said. Uh, that's okay. a good idea. Maybe if you can, uh, try to move them in a position that uh, 
he could be out away from the injury. The injury's on the top of his head, so he's not in like a position where he's at harm to himself. But try to get him somewhere uh, where he can put his maybe his chin up to help with the breathing. Well, now our, our patient is coming a little more alive. He's talking almost, kind of muttering and incoherently. No. <laughs> <laughs> and he's complaining of nausea. Oh, I'm sick. <laughs> I'll tell you guys, this is exactly what happened with one of my patients. So, what can you do for him? I would, I wouldn't let him move too much. I'd try to keep him where he is. Okay. Or get him in like a sitting up position. If he moves himself some, go ahead, Jenna. Okay, sir, right there is fine. Oh, that's all right. Why don't you just lay it back? Go ahead. What I don't want him to do, one of the common causes of that this type of injury can cause is nausea. And I had a patient vomit. You don't <laughs> want him to inhale. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I didn't get the bucket there. <laughs> Sorry, too graphic. <laughs> But, but there it isn't. It happens. Oh yeah. At this point, there isn't a lot you can do for this patient. You've got the ABCs covered. You've got the help coming. At this point, it's a higher level of care. Even at where I am, out at the ski patrol, we would put him on a backboard and get him to a place where the ambulance crew can get to him. But our asking? function in life is to take those patients <laughs> that get hurt somewhere where ambulances can't get to them and bring them to. A place where ambulance can. In this case, we got the help right down the hall. Would you cover him to keep him warm to try and avoid shock? Thank you. That's the follow up. Anything else you guys can think of? What could you cover him with that we have in the EPAC? The thermal blanket. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just Mr. Peterson. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Questions? And oh, I'm <laughs> okay. Good eye, by the way, on spotting that cord. Yes. I've had one of the things we do with our trainees is to train them, to get them to start thinking scene safe right away. We lay a person on the floor. We have a cord plugged into the wall. We say, come on in. And inevitably, 90 plus percent of them go right, grab a hold of the patient and say, you're dead. They never forget to check the scene for safety after that. Check, call, care. Yep. And I guess on that cord, should they have gone around and made sure it was unplugged? That's the only thing I was wondering about. It looked like it, mm -hmm. I mean. Wouldn't hurt. Get away from the area. Have somebody watch over it. Obviously, you have a lot of people. You could assign different activities to each one of you. And if you're the person on the scene and there's people around, you can stay by the patient. You can say, call 911, point out anyone, call 911. Yeah. I like what the AED video told you. The first person on the scene can say, okay, you two, call 911. I need help here now. Person down. And at Whatever a, you can make of the situation. At a facility time. like this, you probably want a couple people, somebody out by the, the east entrance, somebody up by DHMS. You don't know where that ambulance is going to come. So you need to have people at entrances so that they can get that care to this person as quickly as possible. You don't know where that ambulance is going to show up, so you want multiple people at different exits or entrances. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mine is a little more narrowly scoped, and so you get a better <laughs> scope. <laughs> Even in your personal homes, it's very, uh, very common for people to call, and then when the um, uh, ambulance gets there, the door is still locked. Yeah. Get somebody down there and get that door unlocked and it's sort yeah. of the same thing. Tell them where to come. You know, you're not going to just say you're in the bedroom. It's going to take them time to find it. Go down, have somebody go down and unlock it. You're going to have to. So. And you stay on the phone with the 911 operator. Don't hang up. If you were wondering what I came up with as a scenario was he had dropped his wrench. The very sharply pointed hammer uh, was on the edge, it. and as he went for the wrench, this came down and nailed him on the back of the head. Uh, Real? Yeah. Very possible. So that's what I had for the moment. Um, okay, good. Good. Yeah. Ethan 
is Ethan here? And there he is. Alex. Okay, I'm just checking attendance for you guys. So. Thank you. I'm really pleased with the attendance tonight. Thank you all for coming. This is awesome. That's it. Great turnout. Like on off. Nope. Thank you, Mr.